Hello and welcome to Artifacts with Edie, a live show and tell of the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society. My name is Edie Steiner and I'm a music therapist with Akron Public Schools at Bridges Learning Center. I'm also a shepherdess at the Summit County Historical Society. And today, I am School Mom Steiner. Please remember that you need to watch Monday through Thursday to be ready to compete in our game show on Friday, Are You Smarter Than a Border Collie? You can play along with us live again on Friday at 11.30, right here from the Old Stone School. If you're a math person, then check out episodes six, seven, eight, and nine. We are counting on you. Can you take home the title of Are You Um? Can you take on the title of Smarter Than a Border Collie? Tune in to find out. Good morning, scholars at Bridges Learning Center and the scholars in Vice Principal Gruska um, School over at Jennings Community Learning Center. We would also like to thank our Bhutanese American friends sewing masks for Summa Health. You are saving lives and contributing to our community. You, as empathetic citizens, you are historically significant and the heart of Akron and Summit County. Today, we are thrilled to be broadcasting from in inside of the Old Stone School in downtown Akron. So please say hello when you tune in so we know that we can assign to you the three R's, reading, arithmetic, and writing. Um, wait a minute, are, were people just bad spellers in the 1800s? During the 1800s, people did not have a lot of books because paper to write on was expensive. For this reason, memorizing information was important. Students were expected to listen first to what the teacher said and then say it back to the teacher. During the Canal era, all students would have learned using the McGuffey's Reader. A Pennsylvania native, McGuffey moved to Ohio's Western Reserve when he was only two years old. In his family, education was equal to generosity. His family was able to pay for him to not only attend school, but also pay for a special tutor so he could spend more time learning to speak Latin. Around 60% of the English language has origins in Latin. Let's get to the point with some of these familiar words. The word scribble comes from the Latin word scriber, where scribe means script, which means writing. Arithmetic means multi or many, coming from the Latin word multus. In math, two times two is four because you multiply. And of course, reading. Without reading, you can't do writing or math. Learners from Finley Community Learning Center speak over 20 different languages from around the world at their school. Some of these young scholars speak Bhutanese. Do you know any other language besides English? We would love for you to share some words in your language in our comments. It would be really special for us. Mr. McGuffey became a professor for colleges in Ohio when he wrote his McGuffey's Readers. Throughout his life, he was well known for his philanthropy and generosity towards people with fewer opportunities than him. These school books had six levels for grades one through six. There was a different one for each grade. Did you know that a teacher in a one-room schoolhouse like here at the Old Stone School taught all elementary or primary grades to all of their students at once? The youngest children sat in the front to the closest to the teacher. Going towards the back of the room, the kids were older and taller too. The teacher sat at the front of the room with the chalkboard behind her. <clears throat> Did you know that the Old Stone School is owned by the Summit County Historical Society? They partner with Akron Public Schools, where some of our learners, listening learners attend to allow for school visits to come here to the Old Stone School. 
School mom Macaulay greets the students on those field trips where she makes them toe the line. Remember to always stand up straight and respond to questions using your manners. Let's start our lesson. Girls, please line up on my right. Boys, you'll need to line up on my left. Make sure that it, when it's your turn to answer the question, that you come to the front of the line and put your toe on the line. We're going to learn about syllables today. As you say these words, put your hands under your chin. Each time your chin hits your hand, that will be one syllable. Repeat after me. Spring. Spring. One syllable. Currently, the season we are observing is spring. That one was easy. Summer. Summer. Two syllables. We do not go to school in the summer. Here's the last one. Happiness. 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 You're correct. There are three syllables in this word. Now, for those of you at your desk, grab your pencil and finish your arithmetic. And don't scribble. As one of America's oldest companies, Ticonderoga Company, History goes all the way back to the American Revolution. They also had writing utensils available dating back to the War of 1812. Ticonderoga boasts their biggest innovation, helped soldiers to write letters in the 1860s during the Civil War with efficiency far greater than a quill and a knife. But lead pencils were far too expensive for children to use at, the, at school until closer to the 19th century. And that's definitely a lesson for another day. Now that you've finished your work, let's review our clues for today. First, during the canal era, scholars like you did not always write their lessons to learn. Instead, they did what? I, I'm sorry, what did you say? I, I didn't quite hear you. Uh, Oh, oh yes, they listen to their teacher and then memorize their lesson. The author, question two, the author of McGuffey's Reader had connections to what region? Was it the Wildlife Reserve, the Federal Reserve, or the Western Reserve? Wonderful! Pennsylvania native McGuffey moved to Ohio's Western Reserve when he was only two years old. Lastly, when did students start using pencils to do their homework? Oh, uh, never mind. Let's just get to the point. Do you know what today's artifact could be? Uh, oh, wait. You think it's this? A pencil? I've led you astray. The artifact today is a pencil sharpener. This pencil sharpener is a lot bigger than the one that you may use. It was invented by Samuel Forrester in 1884 and it has a patent date that you can see in this picture. The pencil fits inside the hole here and then it is dragged back and forth across the wood to expose the lead and make a final point. Farmers use similar tools to shorten a horse's teeth and hooves. The rope on this sharpener is attached to a set of pulleys that assist in twisting the pencil um, as it goes down the file. And it um, files all the sides by spinning and goes to a nice sharp point. Mr. Forrester, also from Pennsylvania, like Mr. McGuffey, applied for his invention to have a patent. When you apply for a patent, you are making, you are making sure that no one else can copy your idea and then it is protected. And you can make more to sell or you can upgrade your idea with new parts of your invention. 
All of this work is making me ready for recess or even better lunch. Food is important to help your brain work and no one in Summit County or Akron should be without it. No person should ever go hungry. So if you need help, please see the link in our comments about meals in the neighborhoods of Akron and other locations in Summit County. If you can help, please donate to the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank. We need our historically amazing scholars to be ready for our next episode. Tomorrow, we will be back learning about the Old Stone School at 11.30 for another historically fun episode of Artifacts with Edie, where I show, pace, show and tell the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society, where history is always within reach. Thank you.